I'm Dr. Heather Ford. I am currently a lecturer at Queen Mary University of London in the United Kingdom. I am what I would call myself as a paleo-oceanographer, which means that I'm interested in understanding how the oceans moved around and functioned in the past. And sometimes this is really long um, periods of time, so looking over millions of years, how the ocean was different from today. And one of the reasons that that's important is because the ocean um, determines a huge part of our climate system. It's a big regulator of the climate that we experience today. So if we understand how the ocean functioned in the past, we can understand climate in the past. And if we understand climate in the past, we can help understand climate in the future with human inputs. So currently I'm working on understanding how the ocean has uh, moved around heat and carbon over geologic time scales over the last five million years. So right now with climate change, the ocean is absorbing about 90% of the heat and a third of the carbon due to human um, alterations in the climate system. And we don't really know what will happen, how the ocean will accommodate this heat and carbon over long time scales. And one of the ways that we can help to understand that is to actually look in the geologic past. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at how the ocean has, uh, how the ocean carbon content and heat content has changed over the last five million years. This time period about three million years ago is called the Pliocene warm period. It's a time period when um, carbon dioxide levels are about where, are estimated to be about where we are with human inputs today. Um, there was very little ice in the Northern hemisphere um, the continents were basically in the same sort of configuration. Um, so it, it serves as kind of a pseudo analog for future climate change. If we can understand this particular time period and how the ocean and uh, function during that time, we might help uh, understand future climate change. And so I'm interested in understanding how the ocean um, stored heat and carbon during this past warm period and looking at how that climate changed towards today. So to accomplish this research, uh, what I actually use is I work on marine sediment. So the way that we collect marine sediment is that we go out on boats for months at a time and we core the bottom of the ocean and bring this marine sediment up. Marine sediment is made out of, of a bunch of different components. Um, you can have things like dust that's been blown in by wind. Uh, you can have uh, organic stuff that falls to the bottom of the ocean like phytoplankton that live at the surface of the ocean fall to the bottom of the ocean. Um, and then it also comes up with other, there's a lot of skeletons that you can find in the ocean as well. There are these little, this is a, a 3D printed model of, um, uh, of one of these fossils. So in reality, the fossil is about the size of a single grain of sand. Um, but this is a protist called a foraminifera. Um, this one lives in the surface of the ocean and um, I, look into marine sediment to, to look for these particular specimens because um, they make their shells out of calcium carbonate, which is the same sort of thing that a clam or a mussel makes its shell out of. Um, and that chemical composition of the calcium carbonate, either looking at the carbon content or the oxygen content, or in some cases, the, uh, the minor elements like calcium and uh, magnesium or trace elements like boron, um, you can use those um, the chemical composition of these protists to help you reconstruct things like how much ice there was um, globally, what uh, was the temperature of the ocean uh, when these little protists made their shells, uh, and what the carbon content of the ocean was uh, during the time when this little um, when this little for, um, protist of foraminifera lived. Um, so these are ones that um, live in the surface of the ocean, and thankfully we also have uh, foraminifera that live at the bottom of the ocean. These are called um, benthic foraminifera. So you have two points in the ocean that you can reconstruct through time. You have surface conditions and bottom conditions, and these are really important for understanding uh, climate over um, today and over long time scales. So they're kind of like time capsules because they, um, they record an instant in which they live. They're little signals, they're little time capsules that tell us about the conditions during that time in which they grew. The way that we analyze these is that we put them into an instrument called a mass spectrometer. And so what that mass spectrometer does is it analyzes the uh, chemical composition of these little protists. And um, once you have the chemical um, composition of these, these protists, you can then uh, essentially reconstruct climate or whatever um, proxy that you're interested in. So what we're finding in my research is that it looks like the ocean uh, circulated very differently during the Pliocene warm period about three million years ago in comparison to today. So today um, in, the, in the ocean, you have surface currents that uh, move uh, water 
around, um, but you also actually have deep ocean currents, so uh, waters that move from the surface of the ocean into the depth of the ocean. And there's two places that the ocean forms these deep ocean currents today. One is in the North Atlantic and the other is in the so Southern Ocean. And so what happens in these areas is that the water becomes cold and salty and it becomes dense and it sinks into the ocean's interior. And then it traverses all the way around. And as it moves around the bottom of the ocean, it essentially uh, it, it gains carbon um, and it ages. And the oldest, most carbon-rich water is actually found in the North Pacific. And so what we're finding from some of the preliminary research that we've done is it actually looks like the, this um, old, really carbon-rich water that we know today exists in the North Pacific was actually replaced with uh, relatively new water. We had deep water formation in the North Pacific during this Pliocene warm period. Um, so that's uh, because the ocean was circulating differently during this Pliocene warm period in comparison to today, that is implications for how much carbon the ocean can store during that Pliocene warm period or where it's storing that carbon. And we really need to um, under, uh, do some additional research. We need to measure some more analyses, some actual carbon um, property analyses from these little protists uh, and collaborate with climate modelers to really understand the, the complexities of the carbon dynamics in the ocean during that time. One of the reasons that these little protists um, are really useful is that um, some of them have extremely long uh, uh, lineages. So um, this is a this is a particular uh, protist called Siculifer, and so this is a this is a, 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 a Foraminifera that lives today and was also present five million years ago in the ocean. So we're using at least um, shape wise, morphologically wise, the same protist to reconstruct climate as is alive today. So the thing that I really enjoy about uh, my research is that it's incredibly multidisciplinary. So I get to use a really diverse skill set to answer the questions that I'm interested in. I do things from the chemical analyses of these little foraminifera, these little protists. Um, I use uh, coding in my research as well. So I, I also have to write a lot. So I write um, articles for publication and journals to be able to communicate with my colleagues through um, journal articles. I also have to do a lot of public speaking. I have to present at conferences. I also enjoy the fact that I get to go to sea on occasion. So when, because I'm working on marine sediment, I go on boats for a month at a time and try and collect marine sediment from the bottom of the ocean. I think one of the most exciting things that I've done in, in, in my scientific journey is, is the experience of going to sea. Um, you know, you, you go out of port and you oftentimes don't see land for a month at a time. And everybody on the boat is working for a common, uh, a common goal to understand something about the ocean system, whether it's um, modern chemical processes in the ocean or understanding the marine sediment and how that's changed through time. We're all a group of scientists and the amazing support um, crew and staff to fulfill the scientific objectives. Um, so that we can understand something about how the ocean system has changed or, or how, it, how it works today in the modern. I would encourage people to study science because it's such a part of our daily lives. Um, science influences the technology, the technology that we use, uh, the way that we interact with people through cognitive sciences and things like that. There's so much about um, science that just permeates through um, our daily lives. And the, the, the privilege to understand how science works is, 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 is amazing. And to be able to you know, ask a question that interests you and pursue it using whatever technique is appropriate and, and interesting to you is, I, I can't think of basically any better job. It's to just do science.